Hello, I'm Yaela. I'm going to present today my research on characterizing citizen science in Australia. But before I begin, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of these beautiful lands behind me. I am joining today from the land of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, on which I live, work, and learn. I would like to pay my respect to their elders, past, present, and emerging. Citizen science is rapidly growing. In just one decade, citizen science has grown from a small, unknown phenomenon to a distinct field of research, attracting the interest of scientists, governments, and publics. This graph represents this trend, illustrating the exponential growth of academic publication, either based on citizen science data or investigating citizen science as its individual field. And with this growing prospect, one overarching question arises, one which has and continues to be investigated by researchers worldwide. What are the characteristics of citizen science? Over the years, many studies attempted to map citizen science and describe its characteristics. Very broadly, it describes the studies as a growing and dynamic with many national scale projects that are mainly related to life sciences initiated by scientific organizations and utilizes a contributory citizen science model. Those are projects that are mainly designed and initiated by scientists and where citizen scientists engage mainly in collecting data in protocols that are predefined by those scientists. And so where does Australia stand in terms of citizen science characteristics and its growth? Well, we recently learned that Australia is rated number three globally in terms of citizen science scientific output. We also know that to a certain extent, citizen science imitates global trends. For example, the vast focus on, lo on life scientists as highlighted by a survey conducted by the Australian Citizen Science uh, Association back in 2018, uh, which revealed that 97% of respondents were involved in marine, biology, or ecology projects. Still, there is much unknown in terms of Australian citizen science, which the research that I will be presenting today aim to address. And so this research looks to map and characterize citizen science in Australia, and to examine the various projects, objectives, outcomes, and the different challenges as perceived by citizen science project leaders. And so the research tool used for this study was an online survey sent to project leaders, facilitators, and scientists. And the survey was uh, divided into three different sections. First, project character characteristics. Uh, those are the general characteristics of projects, such as scientific fields and the scope of those projects. Second, the project's goals and the different methodologies used throughout the project. And lastly, the specific experience and perceptions of those that are leading those projects. We used a combination of open and closed-ended questions, uh, and we I received a total of 96 responses that reflected 80, 88 citizen science projects throughout the country. These results were um, published in an initial re report last year, uh, which mainly focused on some of those close-ended questions looking overall at the citizen science landscape in Australia. Today, I want to present to you a little bit of a more in-depth uh, point of view looking more deeply into those objectives of the projects and to the perceptions and experiences of those people who are leading these citizen science projects. But firstly, to look at the Australian citizen science landscape as uh, it emerges from this research. So as uh, we can see on the left, the main scientific field uh, still is very much in the life, life sciences, ecology, biology, and environmental sciences, very much uh, so as uh, illustrated above 
in the AXA survey and in global uh, citizen science. Next, the locational uh, scale of the projects, mainly Australian-based projects uh, with many, many local projects and regional projects. And lastly, the citizen science models. Still, we do have many contribut contributory projects, but we also have a large number of collaborative and co-created projects. Co-created projects are those that are initiated by citizens and that citizen scientists take part in all the different aspects of the research of the citizen science projects. And this is a very high number relative to what we've seen globally up till now. So I find this uh, especially interesting and important to um, highlight. Uh, in terms of the goals and the objectives of those citizen science projects, um, they were divided to three subgroups uh, based on the citizen science literature. The scientific development, those are related to new scientific discoveries, data quality, and the expansion of scientific databases. Next, the societal and policy advancements, such as conservation goals and data transparency. And lastly, the individual and community benefits. Those are related to education and to raising awareness. And so from this um, figure over here, uh, you can see all the different goals and objectives indicated by those leading citizen science projects as either primary or secondary goals. You can see that collecting scientific data was the goal that was most prominent, uh, really almost 90% uh, almost of projects indicated this was a primary or second, secondary goal of theirs. Uh, and this was considered an overarching goal because it relates to both the scientific uh, and the um, society and the individual uh, benefits described. Next, we can see the goals of education and raising awareness were also very prominent. We can see generally, if we look here to the left, that those goals that are related to individual and community benefits are the first goals that were uh, rated here. And the next are related to those societal and policy goals like conservation and um, data transparency. And only lastly come those scientific discoveries um, and the examining data reliability. Those are the scientific development goals. And I find this really, really interesting because traditionally citizen science was always thought of uh, or initiated uh, from scientists who were looking for more data, who wanted to utilize or harness the power of citizen scientists to collect more data in order to advance their research. But from what we can see here, those that are leading these projects, uh, think the main benefit uh, of citizen science is actually uh, for those individual and community uh, goals. And when we look more closely to those benefits uh, described by citizen scientists, uh, project leaders, uh, we can see that they very much mimic the goals that they've also previously discussed. And so we can see data collection uh, coming as the uh, uh, most prominent uh, or one of the most prominent goals. Um, this was described by the leaders as, you know, science needs more hands in, for data collection and citizen science can help fill those gaps. Um, Next, uh, actually the, the next three uh, benefits indicated, raising awareness, public engagement and empowerment were all related to those individual or community benefits. Um, yeah, for example, um, increased understanding among citizen scientists of our natural world and the need to protect it. Additional challenges indicated to a lesser degree were related uh, to policy, to community building and to scientific impact. When looking at the benefit, at the challenges, sorry, though, um, this is very interesting because the first challenge here you can see was actually also a benefit, public engagement and communication. And this uh, challenge relates to the difficulties in recruitment and retention uh, and the ongoing communications with citizen scientists that have been increasingly uh, stated as something difficult for these projects to maintain. 
uh, for example, find committed long-term volunteers, particularly in regional areas and rural towns, or genuinely engaging individuals to foster ownerships and relationships. Another challenge that was very prominent was that of resourcing. Uh, this relates um, both to the funding of projects, but also to the time investment and to balancing that um, for those people leading the projects. For example, we are thinly stretched and can't give our participants the support levels we know are vital to continued participation. Additional challenges included technology, that's finding the right technology and sustaining its operation, engaging stakeholders, that is the buy-in from scientists, policymakers, land managers, all these people that citizen science project leaders want to engage with in their projects. But very interestingly, when looking at the challenges and the benefits, we can see that there are a lot of tensions which arise. These are tensions um, between uh, the engagement efforts and the resources, the balancing of technology with the data collection, um, balancing data quality with engagement of many people. And sometimes, and this is very interesting, the exact benefits stated by project leaders are those that bound projects from further expansion. These findings brought me to reflect on citizen science as a balancing act of the many different goals and their potential outcomes. Citizen science provides opportunities to grow both science and society while also contributing to community and to individual goals. But at the same time, it encompasses an inherent trade-off between public engagement and scientific rigor. So, can a project have a citizen science cake and eat it? Well, my data suggests that you can. When asked citizen science project leaders about the success of their projects, 92% of respondents replied, that their project has successfully achieved their goals. And they explain it. The primary purpose for establishing the monitoring program was to both increase information about the species population trends, but to also increase the interest and participation of the community and valuing their contribution from monitoring on their properties and towns. It has built trust and partnerships between government and communities to help save a threatened species. Citizen science is different to traditional science. It is different to mainstream management and policy action, and it is different to science communication and education efforts. But it also encompasses all of these dimensions, and that is what makes it unique. Balancing between the scientific, the social, and the individual goals is a challenge, but one that needs to be nurtured for the future adva advancement of citizen science. And so with that, I will end my presentation for today. Thank you everyone for listening. I would like to also thank all those project leaders, practitioners and scientists who took from their time to help uh, to answer the survey and help my research. And I am hopeful that this analysis helps them with their efforts uh, and helps the citizen science community at large. Thank you very much.